Like I have a friend that constantly, that's a comedian, a well-known comedian. He only calls me Saturday nights at 9.30 <laughs> to say what you're doing, how your week is going. I'm like, listen, where the fuck do you think I am? Yeah. So guess what? Last night he didn't call me, so today I called him. I go, I just want to tell you, last night was the first Saturday in four weeks she didn't fucking call me. I'll be home for te two weeks. He'll never call. He'll call me as soon as they get on the fucking plane. They go, hey, you want to go eat lunch? I just told you a month ago my dates. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. So the mind, listen, I understand a lot of people because I know what I'm going through. I know when you have all this shit on your plate and people really can't grasp it. People have no idea how to grab away you. I look at somebody and I can tell they're in deep thought. I look at somebody and I can tell what's kind of going on, if it's a good time to talk to them, especially if I'm yeah. selling. You know, there's always fucking something. That's why when Lee comes to me, he goes, hey, these people contacted us. I go, whoa. Let's take a step back, take a breath, and go in there with a clear mind. I've, I've noticed in dealing, like starting my own business and then just in dealing with people who are working by themselves, and I did it a lot when I was really new at it, is they try to oversell sometimes. So they get really excited. And like even after you say yes, they're like, yeah, but it's going to be great because of this. And like mm -hmm. I, I already said, yeah. And then they keep going and going. And it really, you said something like, I've, we've been to a, I, you hear it a lot in LA, I'm going to a meeting. I haven't really been to any, I've been to like two meetings, both with you, Joey. And I'm always like, because I don't, I don't want to talk out of bounds. So I'm like, what should I say? And you're like, just let them talk. Yeah. Like there's no reason to talk first and, like so, just it's a, it was a it very inter it was a very uh, like it, it's important to learn that because you, you don't want to go to that big meeting and over talk. You see it if you've ever been to a meeting where somebody's out of line, you fucking feel it in the room. You're like Jesus Christ, what is this guy? Tame him down, somebody tame him down. Oh, it's not good. It embarrasses me. I went to one in January. I met a guy at a Christmas party that was trying to sell me that stuff. Again, Lee. A year later, nobody's using that shit with the viral view of your podcast so you could see the corner. Oh. And he took me to lunch, and it was just a fucking beating. Because oh. before you sell, let's talk. Yeah. I tell even the guest on the show, come in. a little early so we can chit-chat, smoke a bowl. I don't want to throw you to the fucking lions. I want to slow you down. One of the most genius things I ever heard was Gambino. Always had his wife answer the door why is that because he wanted her to slow you down i don't give a fuck if oh, i just talked to you on the phone and said lee come right up the stairs come on talk to me about what troy did to you he was always in the back room in a meeting and as fired up as you were he had her stop you at the door Christ. sit you down give you a cup of coffee offer you a cookie yeah bring a so, little zen in bring a little zen in now you're around the woman that could be your mom. You know how are you gonna act around your mom? It was a genius move, uh, and that I, I didn't think it was a genius. I'm not a gangster, but I thought about it from the other way. How you have to slow your horses down a lot in life. You know, when you first come here, you could see the guys that are, their nose is wide open. Not that they're doing drugs, but they want to be a part of everything. You know, and they want to be like, ah, I want to be on that show. Three Arts is going to be there. I got to be there. I got to show Three Arts how funny I am. And it's kind of, and I got to be honest with you, I was part of that. You know, I was a young comic. I wasn't young. I've always been a dinosaur. But I know what it's like to be in this town and be overly aggressive. Yeah. You know, a lot of those, those roles I got, I got them on my own because I was sending my own paperwork, called the casting office. That's unheard of. That's unheard of, but I didn't give a fuck. I'm trying to sell a job. I'm trying to pay the bills. Troy, you said something very interesting when you had first started. You said you, you didn't want to do reality TV. And I, I know there's a lot of people in L.A. listening, and even New York. Like, when I first came out here, I was very lucky and very happy to have had a job, but my job was in reality. And it's just mm. so easy to get, because that's all... It's a big like, part of the industry. all they have out here. And, like, I've never once worked on, like, a scripted show or anything like that. And that was or a movie, and that's just so hard to get that yeah. you get in you get in this little rhythm of reality shows, and then twenty years later you've edited twenty years, but it's all reality shows. Yeah. So it's 
it's sort of like the nose wide open thing. You you should come here and maybe not take the first job that's offered to well, you. Well, no, but you get a good start that way, you know? Yeah, I mean, you get a start, but they're you get all the, stepping stones. Yeah. Those jobs are yeah. all stepping stones to film and television. You know, yeah. somewhere along the line, some guys in the company go, Psst, I just got a show as a producer. I need an assistant. <clears throat> Is it reality? No, it's fucking CBS. It's a show with Kevin James and Marlo O'Hara, whatever the fuck. And you're gonna be my uh, producer assistant. Now you do that for two years. The guy quits. He snorts coke, fucks the receptionist, <laughs> cheats on his wife. He quits, and guess who gets the job? You do. Now you're a fucking producer on the show for two years. Maybe it stays on for three, seven seasons. You're a producer for four years. You're making pretty good fucking money. You're doing two seasons a year, and now people calling you, going, "You want to produce my fucking show on NBC?" Bam! You went from reality to fucking producer. Oh, it's crazy! Yeah. Like that's how fucking crazy this world is. Right. As soon as like I finished, like I was about to make the move to just doing this full time. I I literally I went and I went to the meeting at the editors union because I had amassed enough hours, and from my sat from my position. Which wasn't great. It's an assistant editor. I was gonna make two grand a week on a union TV show. With when and then with because of the union, I would have gotten like uh, health benefits, and yeah, like maybe I wouldn't be that thrilled with working in reality. But two thousand a week? Are you serious? I was like three years out of college. I was like, oh shit. Yeah. Why yeah. did you pursue it? You didn't want to go forward. With that it? was right when I decided to do this full time, and it was just, I didn't. It, it just it, it, you were just talking about levels. It's stepping stones. It, it's it's kind of hard to get a union go, a gig because they're so well paying. But I was just I didn't want to like we we I had just spent we 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 talk a, a lot about how I was so fu- t- fucking tired. I was working ten to twelve hour days editing and then coming here. So and that's it wasn't my issue was never really my like morality or like my artistic sense because like I didn't my, I wasn't really in it for like art I was yeah. just doing it but I just myself wasn't happy yeah so that's I guess I guess like two sides of the same coin but right but within that world like let's say you're editing in reality television right. within that world you can still do something that matters you can still do something that's that's a little oh, bit outside the the ordinary and make yourself like doing something great for you that's what it's about not I don't mean it in the artistic sense. I mean, like, just something that makes you happy that's, like, maybe contributes in a way to that show that the producers go, oh, that's fucking amazing. We didn't even think of it this way. That's a really great editor. Like, editors control everything. Editors are the ones who make the movies, make the shows. Oh, yeah. Know? And then I'm not, I'm not trying to bash on people in that industry. That's some of the smartest people. Like, my first boss ever, Vin DeBona, essentially created YouTube. He created America's Funniest Home Videos in 1988. There's something like 20, this is probably 26 or 27 seasons. They have shows all over the world. He's a genius. I'm, I'm just saying for me, I wasn't happy yeah. working in reality. We're going in like fucking Marines, you understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker. 